Today, I've got another edition of Back to Basics for you guys, and I'll be discussing disc rot and whether or not this is something that collectors need to be concerned about with their Blu-ray and 4K movies. So let's rock this. Hi everyone, how you doing? I'm Fuzz, and welcome to another edition of Back to Basics, uh, a series where I discuss topics of interest to those who are new to collecting movies on physical media, or maybe even those who are returning to collecting movies after being away from it uh, for a while. So today I'm talking about disc rot with our physical media, which, uh, for those who don't know, is just basically the, uh, the natural uh, physical deterioration uh, and degradation of discs over a long period of time that may ultimately cause the disc to become unreadable or at least partially unreadable. Uh, this is an issue I've been interested in learning more about over the last few years uh, because it's not something that I personally encountered with my own Blu-ray and 4K discs. Um, but I have seen other collectors discussing this issue quite a bit in various uh, groups and discussion forums, and I was wondering just how much of a threat or issue uh, disc rot could become in the future with my own collection. Uh, is this something that we really need to worry about, or has the problem been overstated by some? So I started doing a little casual research on this topic, uh, specifically looking for information on how this issue uh, could impact uh, Blu-ray and 4K discs. And in the process, I, uh, I came across a great article that I think really provides a good summary of everything that I discovered and found in my own research. So I want to go over that article with you guys today, read through some of it with you guys, uh, while also interjecting my own thoughts uh, periodically if there's a point uh, in the article that I either don't agree with or otherwise would just like to uh, expand upon and, and offer a little bit of my own perspective. And I've got a few other articles as well that I might be uh, cross-referencing throughout the video, and you'll be able to find the, uh, the links to any of the articles I discuss in the description below. Now, before I get into the main article that I wanted to go over, I just want to state up front that I don't personally think disc rot is that big of a deal. I don't think it's really that big of an issue. Um, you know, we say disc rot, and that sounds like kind of an alarming term, but I'm not convinced it's really as much of an issue as some people have made it out to be, um, as long as you take care of your discs, right? I mean, that's key here. You got to take care of your discs. You got to store them properly. Uh, don't treat your discs like shit, and uh, you shouldn't have a problem with uh, long-term physical deterioration. That's just my personal view up front, uh, based on what I've experienced so far or haven't experienced. That said, I do have a couple of DVDs that I did notice a uh, couple of issues with, and I'll show you what I'm talking about with those titles here in a little bit. But I also wanted to kind of open up a discussion here uh, in the comments or whatnot and hear from any collectors out there who have experienced problems with disc rot. Um, so please feel free. If, you, if this is something that you've encountered, uh, I definitely want to hear from you in the comments below. Feel free to drop me a comment. Okay, so let's get into this article here, and I'll also have a link to the article in the description below if you want to read it yourself. Um, this is an article from uh, Gizmodo, um, and the, uh, the title is, How Long Will Your Blu-ray Collection Last? Uh, lots of film nerds are hoarding physical media collections, but a physical copy doesn't necessarily mean longevity. Um, and that's what we're getting into here. And the article begins as so. Uh, physical media is very popular these days. Uh, nostalgia, fandom, and streaming burnout have caused certain segments of American society to switch off their Amazon Prime accounts and fire up their Blu-ray players. Uh, one of the many advertised benefits of physical media is that it offers a more permanent, definitive form of media ownership than, uh, than a streaming service. And of course, that's the argument I have been making throughout the uh, entirety of the life of this channel, right? Um, but just how permanent are your Blu-rays? And is physical media really built to last? Well, that's what we're here to uh, discuss, right? Oh, by the way, the author of this article is a guy named Lucas Ropek. Uh, and he continues on here. Uh, I wanted to investigate the lifespan of most physical media products to figure out just how long these products would last. Uh, the unsatisfying answer I found was, it all depends. And that is totally true. 
Um, here's a quick look at what can and cannot be uh, definitively, definitively said about the longevity of your home media library. And uh, he goes on to talk about VHS tapes, which I'm not going to spend any time with VHS tapes here, but let's get right to the, uh, the DVDs and versus Blu-rays uh, portion of the article here. While there might be a few eccentric uh, VHS heads out there, a majority of physical media fans will be collectors of Blu-rays and DVDs. What's the lifespan of a collection like that? Well, the bad news is this. Nobody really knows. Unfortunately, there isn't a lot of open source information about the longevity of commercially mass-produced Blu-rays, uh, technically known as read-only discs or, or BD-ROMs. And this actually tracks with my own experience trying to research this topic. Uh, I found it kind of difficult to get a definitive answer on the longevity of some of these discs. Uh, I was running into a bunch of Reddit threads and discussion forums and just different collectors giving their opinions, but it was it was hard to find an authoritative source that I could get a clear answer on uh, what we can expect from the longevity of these discs. The Blu-ray Disc Association, which developed and owns the technology behind the discs, ignored multiple emails I sent them, uh, and uh, the people that I did speak to on the subject couldn't give me a very specific answer. Problematically, the few studies that do exist that involve tests of Blu-ray longevity generally focus on writable discs, not BD-ROMs. Writable Blu-rays, known as BDRs, tend to have different lifespans than read-only discs. And I've heard that as well, that the, uh, that the, the Blu-rays that we, uh, like when we burn a Blu-ray, uh, the, the writable discs that we can burn our own Blu-rays from, yeah, those discs tend not to last as long as the uh, commercially uh, produced, uh, you know, retail releases that we would get from Amazon or Walmart or whatever. Uh, continuing on, so what's the best guess for how long your Blu-ray collection will last? Uh, the most concise answer we were able to arrive at was at least 10 to 20 years. Now, interjecting here, uh, I think the operative words here are at least, because I think uh, 10 to 20 years, that sounds pretty low. That doesn't sound like a very long time. I'm personally of the belief that uh, Blu-rays are going to last a lot longer than that. But that's what, they're, uh, that's what he says here. That's what uh, some people, apparently somewhere, uh, have officially said. Ern Byman, a digital preservationist with the Canadian Conservation Institute, told me that commercially produced Blu-rays, if they're undamaged and stored correctly, should last at least 20 years. Uh, they could certainly last longer, but you wouldn't want to bank on it, Byman said. Uh, discs, whether they are optical discs or any other kind of media, are degrading from the day you get them. Now, this next part is where it gets kind of interesting, right? Uh, sadly, the longevity of the DVD is similarly shrouded in mystery. One of the few existing articles on DVD lifespans notes that, uh, quote, little information is available, unquote, uh, on DVD-ROM discs, and that there is therefore an increased level of uncertainty for their life expectancy. Uh, expectations vary from 20 to a hundred years for these discs. Now this is where I call bullshit, right? Because how is a DVD gonna last from 20 to a hundred years, but a Blu-ray will only last 10 to 20 years? Yeah, that's total BS. That does not make sense at all. And so because of that, I'm personally of the belief that uh, Blu-rays and 4K discs are going to last a lot longer than 10 to 20 years. I think, uh, I think there's a good chance they could, uh, we could have them for 30, 40 years if they're cared for properly and stored properly. I think there's a good chance we could have them for 30, 40 years before we start to see any uh, significant issues with them of any kind. And who knows? They could last longer. I mean... It's kind of a, we're kind of in uncharted territory, and that's especially true of 4K discs, which I'll uh, get to here in a minute. Um, okay, so moving right along, the scourge of disc rot. We're talking about what disc rot is here. Uh, Blu-rays and other optical discs are made of polycarbonate substrate, also known as plastic. Uh, environmental factors can degrade or damage a disc's plastic material over time if it isn't properly protected, which leads to problems with playability. Uh, this phenomenon is what's widely known as disc rot. Um, and again, I don't like the term disc rot because it sounds pretty hardcore. It sounds way more alarming than I think it actually is. I mean, I guess if you encounter significant disc rot, then it would be pretty alarming. But uh, I'm just not convinced that uh, 
it's as it's as much of an issue as as uh, some have indicated. Um, but disc rot can result from poor ownership practices, and I can definitely see that happening. You know, if or if people aren't taking care of their discs, yeah, then you could run into some problems. Obviously, if you drop or scratch a disc, it can severely damage its playability. But other environmental contagions can contribute to the degradation of a disc. Excesses of heat and light can damage or warp a disc's uh, physical makeup, uh, which is why disc owners are encouraged to store them in cool, dark, and dry places. At the same time, disc rot can also be brought on as a result of poor manufacturing practices. I recently received a, a Blu-ray disc that skipped multiple times during its first run-through. Um, well, hold on. I don't know if I would actually call that disc rot, but I'll get to that in a second. That would seem to signal imperfections in the disc that were baked in during manufacturing. That's a manufacturing error. That's not disc rot, right? Unfortunately, there isn't much insight into DVD and Blu-ray manufacturing standards and practices, although most major companies are thought to be reliable. Uh, bootleg versions of movies purchased online may come with uh, poor manufacturing quality. And I think that, uh, I mean, that stands to reason, right? Now, personally, I don't buy a whole lot of bootlegs. I hardly buy any. But uh, yeah, I would not necessarily expect a bootleg to uh, have the same longevity of, uh, of, a, of a retail disc. Now, while we're on the subject of what disc rot is, I want to cross-reference this article with another article I was reading uh, that was actually focused on CDs. It was called uh, How to Look After Your CDs. It's a Discogs article. Um, and while it was primarily focused on CDs, it does get into DVDs and Blu-rays a bit here too. And I thought there was some interesting information here, uh, specifically as it relates to uh, DVDs and Blu-rays. Um, the th CDs, I guess disc rot used to be more of an issue with CDs in the past. In fact, let's just touch on CDs real quick here while we're at it for any music fans out there. Uh, CD disc rot, um, in the case of CDs, Disc rot is the effect of oxidation on the reflective layer of the disc, resulting in what can look like a bronze discoloration. Um, or as one victim described it, a constellation of pinpricks uh, in the data layer of the disc. As anyone who suffered the uh, misfortune of a scratched or scuffed disc, uh, scuffed disc CD will know, it doesn't take a hell of a lot of damage to render the disc unreadable. And once that data is gone, it's gone for good. CD degradation can be caused by mishandling or improper storage, but disc rot is typically caused by a chemical reaction with the reflective layer of the disc. And that's mainly why I wanted to cross-reference this article so we understand a little bit about what's going on here, because I'm not a science guy. You know, I, I am not, I don't, I don't necessarily understand all the, uh, the granular detail of this stuff and of the, of the uh, chemical process that happens, and happens or the chemical degradation that happens over time. Uh, same article here from Discogs, uh, DVD disc rot. Though they look almost identical to CDs, DVD structure is a little different. Uh, using a plastic disc over the reflective layer. This is good news if you get a scratch on your disc as it means it's less likely to reach the reflective layer and expose it to environmental damage. However, because of this structure, they can also suffer from delamination, where the layers of the disc separate. And I have heard this is like a thing that can happen. Uh, I don't know how common it is, but that's one of the things I've heard, that the, the layers uh, separate. Uh, on the disc, delamination can look like a coffee stain. Um, and I think I might actually have an example of that on a DVD here that I'll show you in a bit. Um, poor case design has been blamed by some as the case for DVD disc rot. Um, during playback, DVD disc rot appears as the picture pixelating or freezing on a specific spot, uh, skipping or again becoming unplayable. Um, and then they actually kind of touch on Blu-rays real quick in the same article. Uh, are Blu-rays safe from disc rot? It seems less prevalent than CDs, DVDs, and laser discs, but it would be unwise to rule out Blu-ray disc rot. Um, there are a few reports of disc rot on Blu-rays, which have been described as a uh, small mold blooms below the surface, rendering the disc unplayable. But notice, even in this article, I'm cross-referencing 
uh, Blu-ray disc rot doesn't appear to be that big of a thing that happens very often. Otherwise, uh, they probably would have put more about it uh, in these articles. I do want to go back to a, a sentence that I kind of uh, glossed right over, but uh, in the DVD disc rot uh, portion of that Discogs article, it said poor case design has been blamed by some as the case for DVD disc rot. Well, I've been railing against crappy cases for, for a while. Uh, in fact, I even made a, a uh, video where uh, I talked about how much I hate those eco cases because they have these giant ventilation ports in them. They're, they're, they're horrible cases. So um, that's you know something I do to try and prevent disc rot on my end is I swap out any poor cases that I don't think are protecting the disc adequately. I always swap those out for uh, better cases. And I always have a, a couple boxes of different types of cases around uh, for whenever I get a new title that comes in a crappy eco case uh, yeah, I chuck those eco cases right off the bat. So if you want to know more about my thoughts on eco cases and, uh, you know, that's part of why I made that video, uh, make sure you check out that video, uh, when you get a chance. By the way, if you're enjoying the content on this channel, do me a favor and please consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, and if you do, don't forget to hit that notification bell, activate that notification so you can be alerted when I'm posting videos that you might be interested in. Also, don't forget to like the video as well. It really does help with the channel's visibility and the YouTube uh, algorithm. So thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. All right, so going back to this Gizmodo article, uh, it then goes on next to... Uh, to talk about 4K discs, and this is something I I definitely have some thoughts on this uh, because I think what he's describing here and what I'm about to read you, I don't think that's necessarily disc rot. In fact, I don't think it's disc rot. Um, it says, what about 4K discs? Um, one of the newer products in home entertainment is the 4K or Ultra HD disc, which provides higher quality video and sound. However, this kind of disc may be even more vulnerable to environmental corruption than your typical 1080p Blu-ray or DVD discs. I'm not sure I buy that. I'm not sure I buy that. Let's continue here and see what else he says. Uh, Countless online threads will attest to 4K owners who have had playability problems after a very short period of time. Some reports suggest this is the result of the disc's unique format. Um, Jeff Rossio, there are, are films at home, or formerly of films at home, a notable voice in uh, the physical media community, has argued that 4K discs hold substantially more data than Blu-ray and DVDs and small scratches or imperfections can cause more substantive disruptions to playability. That's true. That's true. 4K discs hold more data, but that doesn't mean that they're more susceptible to disc rot. That could just be, uh, it, it's an imperfect technology. And I talked about this, um, talked about the 4K technology and these, these little skips and problems that people have been encountering. I made a video about, uh, you know, brand new 4K disc freezing and skipping. And, uh, and I addressed some of those concerns. That is not disc rot. Now, you can make the case that maybe there's some kind of manufacturing error or some sort of problem that happens on the manufacturing end. Maybe there's a quality control issue of some kind, but uh, I don't think you can make it the case that those things are disc rot, right? The thing about 4K is the format hasn't really been around long enough for us to know what type of long-term deterioration will happen with 4K discs. You know, the first 4K discs only came out in 2016, so we're less than 10 years in to the 4K format, so it is really hard to, to know uh, what the, the disc rot situation is going to be like with this particular format. However, we do know that 4K discs are a type of Blu-ray disc, and uh, as I mentioned previously, I'm under the impression that Blu-ray discs aren't necessarily that susceptible to disc rot, as long as you take care of your discs. So I'm kind of transferring that same assumption over to the 4K Blu-ray disc as well. Any problems that people are encountering with 4K, that is not a, a product of disc rot. Uh, manufacturing errors or, or issues are just that. They are not necessarily a, a testament to how long the disc will last or whether some sort of uh, degradation will appear on that disc within the next you know, 20 or 30 years. Uh, manufacturing issues. I mean, it's possible that, uh, you know, like the early Blu-rays, 
It's possible those might not hold up as well as later Blu-rays as the technology and manufacturing uh, processes were perfected and got better and better. Um, I have read, and I can't remember which article it was that I read this, but I read somewhere that uh, early Warner Brothers Blu-rays, like the ones that were produced between 2006 and 2008, that some people have, have reported having issues with some of those Blu-rays. But I haven't personally encountered that yet. So it's possible some of the early Blu-rays maybe weren't manufactured at quite as high of a standard, or maybe there were some issues with those first few years that, that got resolved later on. I don't know. Um, I can tell you this, though. I can tell you that uh, I, have, uh, I went back and looked through some of my old Blu-rays. I have actually quite a few old Blu-rays that I've had for, you know, since about, uh, you know, 2007, 2008, um, or they, they were manufactured in between 2006 and 2008. And uh, in fact, I've got a few here that I just grabbed off the top of my head just from my shelf. Ones that titles that I knew I had had a while that, uh, and that were manufactured back in the early days of Blu-ray. Uh, Black Hawk Down, for example. Uh, you know, this was a uh, 2006. So this is the first year Blu-ray started coming out, 2006, right? So this is one of the, the early Blu-rays. The disc still looks perfect and it plays fine. Never had an issue with it. Uh, same thing with uh, Michael Clayton here. Little George Looney movie. When did this come out? I think this was like 2007. Yeah, this is a 2007 Blu-ray. Um, again, same thing. The disc looks perfect. No issues. Uh, SWAT. I've had SWAT forever. Love this. Uh, love this movie. And again, this is one of the early manufactured Blu-rays in those first couple years. And again... No disc rod on this one either, or, or anything that even looks like it could develop into disc rod, right? I mean, it looks, the disc looks perfect. It looks fine. It's a nice, clean looking surface with no discoloration, no holes, nothing like that. Um, so yeah, I mean, and same thing here, Man on Fire. This was an older uh, 2007 Blu-ray, I think, one of the earlier Blu-rays. I, I watch this all the time, you know, and it plays perfectly. You know, I've had it. For a long time now what uh, some of these discs i've had well they were manufactured like you know 16 17 years ago right um and i've had some of these i've had almost that long so uh and, and entrapment another one early blu-ray that was uh that was manufactured so i just grabbed a few examples no disc rot on any of these discs you know and i have plenty of others as well from that era, I have never encountered an issue with my Blu-rays. And, uh, you know, all I do is take care of my discs and store them properly and handle them properly, you know, and uh, they seem to last. All right, so back to this Gizmodo uh, article. Let's talk about tips for proper disc storage and handling. Uh, the common wisdom when it comes to good disc storage practices is pretty straightforward, and I agree with that. Uh, ideally, discs should be stored vertically in a standard size jewel cases, right? So what we're talking about here, they should be like this, right? Or like what you see behind me, library style with the discs up on their end like that. What you definitely do not want to do is store your discs in stacks like that because they can warp over time uh, due to gravity or, or whatever. But it's, it's just not what they're meant to be stored or not how they're meant to be stored, right? They're not meant to be stored in stacks like that. Uh, so and, you know, I can't get into all the uh, scientific details, but I've just had it in my mind that storing things like this is bad. Now, and I'm talking for the long term here. Now, I mean, maybe for the short term, maybe you run out of space on your storage unit. You need to take a couple titles and kind of put them up there like that, right? Just a couple loan titles, right? Well, that's fine uh, temporarily. It's not going to do any damage to your disk just to do that for a period of time, but I wouldn't go that route for long-term storage options. You want to always keep your, your discs like that, library style. And uh, I do believe that that is a, a key to helping these discs last longer, right? So yeah, vertical uh, library style. Um, also in this article, uh, those cases in turn should be stored in a dry, dark, cool place that doesn't suffer from too much light expo exposure. Right, so uh, you don't want your your movies to be sitting in front of a window that's going to have sunlight beating down on them um, for half the day. Right, that is that's bad news. You definitely don't want excessive heat uh, to uh, to impact 
your movies. And of course, when handling your discs, you should always uh, hold them by the center hole uh, so as to avoid scuffing, smudging, or scratching them. Now, I, center hole, I mean, I think, that just by the way, this is just a junky burn CD for, for demonstration purposes, a like visual aid, but yeah, um, I hold my discs always by the edges like this. Now, you can use that center hole there. If you want to hold them like that, that's fine too. But of course, your fingers should not be touching the surface of the discs, right? That's that's bad news. You definitely want to handle them properly and, uh, you know, not get any oils or anything on our hands on the discs, right? And of course, we don't want them to scratch or get damaged in some other kind of uh, permanent way. So, right, you want to handle your discs very well. And then I also want to cross-reference this with that uh, that Discogs article I was reading. Uh, they do have some uh, tips for the correct treatment of your discs. Now, remember, they're focused more on CDs and Blu-rays, but I think the same, the same principles still apply here. Uh, you want to handle your disc correctly, touching only the outer edges and hold in the center, you know, just like I was talking about. Um, while it's probably second nature by now to be cautious with the reflective underside of the discs, you should also be careful of the top printed layer, you know, where the, where the, uh, the label is, uh, as damage to this side can also impact playback. I didn't know that. I didn't know that, but I mean, I guess it makes sense. If it's damaged enough, it's going to be a problem, but I've always only focused on the underside, you know, but... So there you go. Uh, store your discs in the upright position. Again, like I was just saying, avoid keeping them in stacks, much like you would vinyl records. You would never still, you would never store a bunch of vinyl records on a stack like that, right? That would fuck up the vinyl discs. That they would definitely warp. That is not good. So if we're not going to do it for vinyl discs, we shouldn't do it for our movies either. Uh, even though the technology is more advanced now, we got to make sure that uh, if we want our movies to last that we store them vertically. And of course they say they should also be kept in a cool, dry environment. Uh, keep your discs in jewel or keep cases rather than paper sleeves. That's another thing. Don't put, don't use paper sleeves for your discs or like disc binders. I can't stand disc binders, uh, you know, that have little slots for each of the discs and have pages that you flip. Yeah, I would not recommend using something like that to store your discs. Um, Anchor the disc using the anchor pin in the center of the case. Of course, we're just talking about, uh, you know, that little, that little center thing. You want to make sure that that is functional, not broken. If it is broken, you probably want to replace the case and make sure that it's, that the disc is really secure in there, you know, that it's not going to be uh, moving around. But that's essentially, uh, that's essentially all you got to do, right? And then, of course, I did make that video on uh, new 4K discs freezing and skipping. Check that video out, out as well. I'll be linking to that in the description as well because I go over how to clean your discs in that video. And I don't want to, like, go over it uh, all over again here. So, but, uh, yeah, if you, if you keep your discs in good shape, if you store your disc properly, if you take care of your discs, I really don't think you're going to have much of a problem with disc rot. And I think I personally believe that the disc could last 30, 40 years or more. You know, I'm not uh, convinced that we're only going to get 10 or 20 years out of a Blu-ray. No, I, I think those are likely to last me a lot longer and I'm planning on it. You know, I call this my geezer collection for my twilight years. You know, I'm collecting, preparing for the future. So uh, I'm, I, I don't plan on having all, you know, most of these discs not be readable in, in 15 or 20 years, right? So I, I fully expect that they'll be with me. But, you know, we haven't had enough time to really fully assess that, right? Sometimes the only thing that can, that can really be the, provide the proof and evidence we need is time, right? So uh, Blu-rays, they've been around for less than 20 years, 4K less than 10 years. So it's entirely possible that, uh, you know, we don't know what the lifespan is going to be beyond, say, 20 years. I feel confident that, that my Blu-rays are going to last me for at least another 10 or 15 years or longer. But, uh, but it's entirely possible that it doesn't. Nobody really knows for sure. Uh, but based on my experience so far with my titles, I, I haven't really noticed any problems with disc rot, even in the titles that I've had for 15, 16, 17 years. Um, yeah, I, it just has not been a problem or something that I've really encountered uh, with my Blu-ray or 4K discs. Now, that said, I did encounter one instance of disc rot in my collection, one that I'm aware of. 
I've, you know, I've looked through a lot of discs in preparation for this video. And uh, I found an old DVD, my Fortress DVD. Um, I noticed something weird about it uh, when I went to play it. Uh, I don't know, about a year ago. I guess it was about a year ago I noticed this. And, uh, and I thought I actually had a couple uh, DVDs where this issue was... That where I noticed this issue, but when I went back to look through my the the few DVDs that I've held on to that aren't in storage, I, I this was the only disc I could find uh, an issue with. And I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but there's this kind of there's this weird like kind of I don't even know if you can see that. I'm going to try and get a picture of it and show you guys. Sorry, this is hard to do. There is this swirly kind of irregular pattern going around the disc, right? And I don't even know if you can see it. It's really hard to see. You can kind of see it up in the top there. It's about that big and it's just kind of, it's irregular and it's kind of, it looks like maybe there's some of that layer separation that we were talking about earlier. Um, but uh, the disc plays, like I actually played it and it still plays, or at least it plays at the beginning. I think I probably only watched about 20 minutes of it and then turned it off. I never actually continued watching it the last time I checked this out. But uh, so the disc still appears to play. So I assume that what I'm, this is like a form of disc rot. But this is like the only thing I've really seen in my entire collection was on an old DVD. And it makes sense because my, my DVDs, most of my DVDs, once I upgraded to Blu-ray, I didn't really care a whole lot about my DVDs anymore. You know, I started replacing everything in DVD. I mean, there are, there's a few DVDs that I've kept around for posterity, but most of them I don't really care about. I just, uh, I had them packed in a box in a storage unit, right? So I will be the first to admit that my DVDs, my old DVDs for uh, a, you know, a fairly significant period of time were just in storage and not being taken care of as well as they could be. And I think that's what I ended up with here. I mean, I've had this for, I think, 25 years. I've had this DVD for 25 years. So this is the only thing, but even my other DVDs, I didn't notice anything like this on those other DVDs. All my discs look pretty solid. So it was only one title uh, among my old DVDs that I noticed any kind of issue that could be interpreted as disc rot. And, uh, and in this case, it doesn't appear to have stopped the playability of the DVD, but I'm expecting it will at some point uh, with time. So, so I don't know, you know, uh, it, this is kind of a, it's a weird issue, you know? I think it really just depends on how well you take care of your discs and how well you handle your discs. Uh, if you treat them reasonably well, I don't even think you have to be like super hardcore about it. Uh, you know, as long as you handle the disc by the edges, you keep them in cases and you keep them stored up, you know, vertically in a, you know, not extreme temperature condition situation, then I think you're going to be fine. I think in most cases that disc rot's not going to be that big of a deal. But I also want to hear from those of you out there who have had your own experiences with disc rot, if you have. Um, if you've had any experiences with disc rot, either DVDs or Blu-rays or even 4K discs, I wouldn't expect there to be many instances of disc rot with 4K discs out there. There might be some issues with the playability, but I, as I said earlier, I don't think that's due to disc rot. I think that might be some sort of other manufacturing issue or quality control issue. Okay, so that about wraps it up for my uh, Back to Basics installment on Disc Rod. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I always love hearing from you guys, but I especially want to hear from you on this issue, if this is an issue that you've encountered. If you've uh, encountered Disc Rod or, uh, you know, just natural uh, degradation on your movies over time, I want to hear about it. What kind of experiences have you had out there? Uh, have you ended up with unplayable discs? that, you know, like maybe the early Blu-rays that came out, like I was talking about, you know, the earlier uh, Warner Brothers or Lionsgate Blu-rays from those first couple years of Blu-ray manufacturing. Have you guys had any issues with those kind of discs at all? Um, I haven't, but I want to know, uh, I want to know if you guys have. Uh, so feel free to uh, drop a comment down below to uh, add any additional perspective uh, to this uh, discussion. Uh, don't forget to uh, like the video and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Thank you so much for watching today, guys. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you soon.